The 16th of July 2019 marks a momentous occasion in MSF's history as we celebrate the 40th anniversary of our foundation back in 1979. I'm delighted to be able to pay tribute to the many colleagues, partners, friends and visionaries who have played a part in getting us to where we are today, as well as take a look at what the next 40 years may bring. Major birthdays are naturally a time to look back and to reflect. If we were a person, we'd probably be a bit nervous about entering our 40s. It might even be a time to ask ourselves what life is all about and whether we're on the right track. Well, I'm pleased to say that in 2019, Imasad is experiencing none of those emotions. Indeed, we're more confident today than we've been for many years. We're full of vigor and energy and are looking forward tremendously to the next few years, which promise to be extremely exciting. This, of course, is down to the extraordinary journey we've been on in recent years, but it is also about the strength of our foundations established 40 years ago through the vision, energy, tenacity and skill of our founders. For a technology company to have survived 40 years is actually a rarity. Let's not forget that when we were born in 1979, Microsoft was only four years old, Apple just three, while Facebook, Google and Amazon didn't even exist. The mobile and internet revolutions lay ahead of us, and indeed it's been pretty much constant disruption ever since. 2019 is an important anniversary for several reasons for the global telecommunications industry. It's the first year when the majority of humans on the planet now have access to the internet. It's the 30th anniversary of the World Wide Web and the advent of the web browser. And it's the 50th anniversary of the first data packet sent between two computers as a precursor to the internet. Change is usually not kind to established businesses, especially technology businesses. To survive for so many decades through periods of abrupt and seismic change is exceptional. Indeed, of the first FTSE 100 participants of 1984, when the index was created, then supposedly Britain's biggest and best public companies, only 28 remain today, a 72% attrition rate. So for Elmasat to be not only surviving but thriving today is something we should very much celebrate. Let's look at our history. Emmasat originates from the International Maritime Satellite Organization, a non-profit intergovernmental organization established on the 16th of July 1979 at the behest of the International Maritime Organization, the UN's maritime body, to operate a satellite communications network for the maritime community with a specific mandate for maritime safety, becoming the sole provider of the Global Maritime Distress and Safety Service, or GMDSS. A few years later, in coordination with the International Civil Aviation Organization, the Convention and Governing MSAT was amended to include improvements to aeronautical communications, notably for public safety. Maritime and aeronautical safety remains at the heart of MSAT today. We still provide GMBSS services free of charge as a public service, and we have undoubtedly played our significant part in helping to save many thousands of seafarers' lives over the years something of which we could all be very proud. In the skies, we are the backup for air traffic control systems across the world's oceans, installed on nearly all ocean transiting aircraft. We're still innovating constantly in safety. Safety still drives and inspires us. Indeed, this year, we're introducing our next generation maritime safety terminal. We recently launched Swift Broadband Safety, the next generation of cockpit safety services, and we're about to move into phase two of the IRIS program seeking to revolutionize European air traffic management. The next big change for Emmasat came in 1999, when the organization was privatized and went from being an intergovernmental organization to a private limited company. At the same point, the International Maritime Satellite Organization changed its name to the International Mobile Satellite Organization, or IMSO, with a mandate to regulate various Emmasat activities including GMBSS, and IMSO and IMSAT signed an agreement imposing public safety obligations on the new company. This transformation was itself a momentous achievement. IMSAT was the first international satellite organization that was privatized. At that point, 20 years ago, we set out on our journey as a commercial entity focused on developing our business around the core of safety services. In the late 1980s, our shareholders 
were exclusively our distribution partners called LISOs, land earth station operators, essentially global gatekeepers for our services. Many of those gatekeepers were also our founding countries, although over time our shares passed into the hands of national telecommunications operators. Then, in 2003, we went through a leveraged buyout when two respected UK headquartered private equity firms, Apex and Pamira, bought a significant minority stake in the company. This drove further change because it transformed our shareholder base and led directly to our flotation on the London Stock Exchange in June 2005. Following this, our shareholders became largely global institutional investors, completely distinct from our distribution partners, although some of our original founding shareholders retained their shares, reflecting their commitment as an investor alongside their normal business activities with us. At almost the same time, we launched the Inmasat 4 generation of satellites. This, for the first time, extended our networks to include the ground segment, making Inmasat a true end-to-end -end mobile telecommunications operator for the first time, and giving rise to the era of value-added resellers that endures today. Even though the role of our channel partners has changed dramatically in recent years, they remain absolutely vital and highly valued partners who make a huge contribution to our success in all our core markets and in every part of the globe. We've been very proud of our company's performance and in particular our dividend track record as a public company for the last 14 years. We're now looking forward to prepare for a new era in our corporate history if the takeover offer from a consortium of four leading investment institutions completes, expected to be around the end of 2019. This will catapult us into another exciting period at a time when we are, once again, seeking to transform our industry and play an ever-expanding role in the emerging global digital society. During all of this organisational change, Immerset as a business has also been transformed beyond all recognition. Back in 1979, we leased capacity on third-party satellites. It wasn't until 1990, with the launch of the Immersat 2 series, that we first flew our own space segment. Since then, the astonishing pace of our innovation in space has not only continued, it has been getting ever faster. From the Immersat 3s in the late 1990s, we've achieved the move to an all-IP, 3G, end-to-end -end network with the Immersat 4s in 2005. The revolutionary move into KA band and fully fledged mobile broadband in 2015 with the Immersat 5s introducing our global express network. The first ever hybrid satellite terrestrial network in Europe in the shape of Inmasat S and the EAN which saw its first aviation passenger traffic this year. The next steps for GX and the renewal of our L band business with GX5 and two Inmasat 6 spacecraft currently undergoing manufacture. Only a few weeks ago, the GX7, 8 and 9 Airbus production contract, which vaults us into a complete change of business model to deliver exceptional agility and velocity in our future space segment innovation. And most recently, the collaboration with Space Norway to extend the coverage of GX into the Arctic region and our first foray into non-geosynchronous orbits. Throughout all of this network innovation, we have continuously met our GMDSS maritime and aviation safety requirements. What a journey. Indeed, in 2010, our exceptional track record of innovation in space was recognized when we won the highly prestigious McRobert Award for our began service. On behalf of us all, I'd like to profoundly thank all those who have contributed to this incredible set of achievements. Not just our own past and current colleagues, but also our key manufacturing and launch partners, Airbus, Boeing, Thales Alenia Space, Northrop Grumman, Ariana Spas, ILS, Sea Launch, SpaceX, and ULA. Yet it's not just in space that we have changed significantly in recent years. In 2009, we began the process of adding direct sales capabilities to complement our channel partner relationships by acquiring Stratos. We followed up on that by subsequently acquiring Segovia, ShipEquip, Globe Wireless, and TCCom, as well as organically developing our own downstream retail sales capabilities meaning that in our maritime, global government, US government and aviation in-flight connectivity markets, we now operate a mixed, direct-indirect route to market. Of course, our channel partners remain vitally important to our future and in 2019 still account for more than two-thirds of our satellite services revenues. 
we owe an enormous debt of gratitude for their loyalty and skill. I'd like to thank in particular several of our longest established partners for their contribution to the Immersat story so far, including Marlink, Navarino, Speedcast, Citic MCN, Mosfia Sputnik, Satcom Direct, Collins Aerospace, CETA On Air, Spectra, Talis, and Toto Teo, and of course many others, as well as some of our longest serving value added manufacturers who build and develop the terminals and systems at the edge of our networks, which deliver so much value, including in particular Cobham, Boeing Commercial Satellite Services, Beam Communications, Hughes, Honeywell, iDirect, Intellium, and Spacium. Our ecosystem is world class, working together to deliver excellence and innovation focused on the customer. In more recent times, we applied the finishing touches to our evolution as a business by creating market intimate business units, by reinventing our service delivery capabilities via the creation of an operations division, and most recently, by spinning out our product development and management capabilities into a new product group, which also established the foundational skills for our new digital platforms and services ambitions. And finally, I also wish to pay tribute to the work of our Chief People Office and the support they provide to our most important assets, our people. Not just in terms of recruiting, retaining and developing the brightest and best talent, but creating an inspiring and empowering working environment where our purpose, values and culture liberate people's potential and support a happy and fulfilling workplace. Immersat has always been about much, much more than making money, and we continue to believe in the importance of our role in wider society. It gives me enormous pleasure to lead a truly cosmopolitan, multicultural, diverse, passionate, skilled, and hardworking group of employees. Outside the core commercial business and our safety mandate, we're also very proud to have been closely associated with several important charitable ventures, as well as a major sports sponsorship in recent years. These two have become an important part of who we are. Since the year 2000, we have funded and participated in the activities of Telecom Sans Frontières, a truly amazing organization that delivers communication services into disaster zones, focusing on emergency response technologies. Since its foundation, TSF has responded to more than 140 crises in over 70 countries, providing communications to more than 20 million people and nearly 1,000 NGOs. We're delighted and humbled to be associated with TSF's important work. More recently, we've established a similar collaboration with Team Rubicon, a veterans charity focused on disaster relief work, and we hope that this association will also grow to become a core collaboration for us. I also want to pay tribute to our long association with the Volvo Ocean Race, now renamed simply The Ocean Race, a legendary round-the-world yacht race with whom we've been a partner for many years. Not only has the race enabled our maritime communication systems to be showcased around the world in the most extreme environments, but our communication services have provided genuine value to the race itself. Everything from real-time video, race and crew communications, and for safety communications. We've also been delighted to be associated with an event that powerfully supports clean oceans, diversity and youth, and whose core values include teamwork, courage, resilience, skill, and fair play. On this 40-year journey, there have been several hands on the tiller, but in fact, surprisingly few, only five CEOs in our 40-year history. Immersat has been fortunate in its talented and visionary leaders over its history. I've been CEO now for seven and a half years, and I feel both humbled by the qualities of my predecessors and inspired by my inheritance from them. And I know that all of us CEOs will have felt incredibly fortunate to have had the chance to lead such an amazing organization, one that makes such a positive contribution to our world. So here we are, 40 years on, looking ahead to the next 40 years. In early June, I participated in the celebrations of the 40th anniversary of IMSO at the IMO headquarters. At that celebration, Olaf Lundberg, who was IMSO's first CEO, spoke powerfully about the early days of Inmosat, especially the gathering together of exceptional talent, the creation of a truly collaborative culture, and the array of huge technological and commercial challenges that had to be successfully addressed in Inmosat's early years. Well, 40 years on, so much has changed, 
and yet in so many ways it seems that not very much has changed at all. Because here we are today, still focused on growing our talent base, still collaborating powerfully inside and outside the company, and still inhabiting a veritable tornado of market, competitor, and technological change and disruption. Indeed, 40 years later, we're now entering the era of the always-on, pervasively connected global digital society, empowered by dense, diverse, interoperable 5G networks. With next generation connectivity transforming enterprises in a huge variety of market segments, while having an increasingly powerful impact on the daily lives of consumers and the relationship between governments and their citizens. In our current core markets, the trillion dollar merchant maritime industry is being revolutionized by the advent of smart shipping. Connected aircraft are becoming the norm. Governments are putting global agile communications at the heart of their core capabilities, and a range of land-based markets are being reinvented by the power of the Internet of Things. In this fast-emerging world, the relevance and role of mobile satellite telecommunications is expanding rapidly, not just extending 5G onto the seas, into the skies, into remote and rural areas, but also adding security, resilience and unique space-based services to next-generation terrestrial networks that are becoming part of the critical national infrastructure of nations and regions. Never forgetting that maritime and aero safety services are at the heart of what we do, this emerging digital society will bring us new and hugely exciting opportunities and challenges. We'll grasp them, rise to them and conquer them, secure in the strong foundations that have been put in place over the last 40 years. We move forward with an inspiring sense of purpose, a cohesive culture and strong values. We are energized by a talented, engaged and empowered workforce and lead our industry hand in hand with our many existing and new partners and friends around the world. So, as we celebrate a momentous 40th birthday and look back on a history of which we can all be very proud, let's also wish Imasat the very best for the future too.